I'm Emily McQueen. I was a university studies major, and I was the BYU-Idaho class of 04. I think my greatest success after leaving BYU-Idaho is that when I was there, before I was married, I thought maybe I want four kids someday. And I think my greatest success is actually pulling that off. <laughs> Some days I think, how am I doing this? This is crazy. And um, the physical preparedness that BYU-Idaho gave me, the mental stamina and the confidence that BYU-Idaho gave me helps me every day as a mother to not question when things get dark, when things get hard. So I love getting involved in the community through wheelchair racing and adaptive sports and reaching out to other disabled people who are either newly injured or looking to get into sports or people who want to become mothers or fathers but feel like they're limited because they're in a wheelchair. So I love to take my opportunities, my experiences to, to mentor people who want to see what it's like to actually carry a baby while using a wheelchair. Like, is that even safe? Yes, <laughs> it's safe. <laughs> I didn't get involved in wheelchair racing until 2007 or 2008. After having two children, I realized I didn't have a competitive outlet in my life, that I had nothing that I could go and just like, you know, train really hard for and just do it. I thought my husband was getting a little mad at me because I'd always want to play him Scrabble and I thought I was good at Scrabble and I could just beat him. And he's like, no, you need a competitive outlet and it can't be Scrabble. <laughs> so uh, it wasn't because of that that I found racing, but at about the same time, I found racing and I got started in marathons, not immediately. I actually started with a 5K and then a 25K and then a marathon. And that's been a great, great experience. My name is Chris McQueen. I graduated from BYU-Idaho in 2005 with a degree in English and uh, emphasis on professional writing. I think the real thing that brought me to BYU-Idaho was Emily. While Emily and I were dating, she was up there. I'd go from Orem and drive four hours up to BYU-Idaho. And when I got up there, I just loved, I loved the people. Like I loved uh, everybody that Emily introduced me to and I really liked the whole feel of it. I felt like on that four hour drive, I actually kind of cleared my head. The world went away and I got to just be with this great girl in a really great place. You have no idea how much I loved being in college. To be on my own and to be uh, in a place where like smiling faces were all around and everyone was being goofy and everyone was my age. Everyone was kind of dressed and acted as I would and um, it just felt I felt very at home. And then in October, one night, I was up in the tree behind dorm four and just climbing with a friend and slipped and fell and broke my back. As I was falling from the branch, it was about 30, 35 feet up in the air, and um, I hit the ground. Actually, I hit a branch on the way down, and it broke my back, and then I broke the branch, and then I fell to the ground and landed on that same branch. So when I was on the ground looking up at the tree, I, um, I was having some overwhelming physical feelings, but I also had a really um, peaceful spiritual feeling. And um, clearly from the Holy Ghost, I felt and heard the words, you're going to be just fine and you'll have so many opportunities because of this, so don't worry. And that provided so much peace that from that point on, I never had to ask why, because I knew it was gonna be fine. I started planning my return back to BYU-Idaho while I was still in the hospital. Um, I loved it so much in those first couple months that that is, it was probably a coping mechanism. I wanted my previous life, I wanted to get back to that. And, but it also uh, meant that I was gonna be independent again. And it meant that I um, could have that freedom, that learning that I was really ready for being 18 years old. I was ready to be back.
It took so much physical preparedness that I had to be able to handle the hills and I had to be able to handle, um, I mean, my body was still in healing mode. And so I had to keep, yeah, I had to be able to keep, keep a schedule. And over the last, you know, eight months, going from rehab, just uh, from a hospital stay through rehabilitation, and then to just be out there on the side of a hill, I felt like either always going down or going up. And it, um, it was shocking and kind of discouraging. And that's why uh, I just took one class my first semester, and it was ceramics. So I only had to go one place. And I uh, just made pots until the, <laughs> the cows came home. <laughs> I'd gone to other schools before going to BYU-Idaho, and it was, it was different. Like, the way you interacted with everybody uh, was really different. Uh, people were encouraging, they wanted to see you succeed at, at something, and if you had an idea, there was generally someone there that said, yeah, that's a good idea, we should try that. And that, that was really cool, that's what I really wanted, and I enjoyed that. Everybody wanted to grow. Everybody wanted to go somewhere and do something, and it wasn't because they were looking for um, that perfect job or trying to get the perfect resume put together. They really wanted to do these things, and they wanted to be excited about what was going on. Um, I think that comes a little bit from a desire to just grow eternally and have an internal, eternal perspective. So each time I had, I was tested in my faith about what I did believe in, and if I did have a reason to hope in this life, the answers were given through the resources that the university provided, through devotionals and general authority talks, and my involvement in Relief Society, and um, the friendships that I developed, and the conversations that we had with friends about, you know, like, as we were all processing these deep questions together, uh, that little by little helped to kind of uh, hone my path and and show me, then um, get me on the right path as far as my personal spirituality. I had a very unique experience. Uh, I was coming actually late to a devotional where President Packer was speaking. As I'm coming in the back door, uh, a lady flagged me down. She said, oh, quick, come here. I have a place for you to sit. I'm like, okay. I'll follow you wherever you want to put me. And um, she brought me right into the front row of the Hart Auditorium. And right there, I was just like listening to President Packer. I forget even what his talk was about, but at one point in it, he said, and he looked right at me, and he said, well, there are there two, are two of, you of you sitting, sitting there. there. There are two of you. We are dual natured. There's a spirit and a body. And he looked right at me, he said, there are two of you sitting there. And I just thought, oh, you're right. And as far as my questions about, you know, feeling, feeling stuck in this body, it was really, um, it was really a great comfort. He was like telling me, you're gonna be fine. And, uh, and you'll, yeah, you'll be free again.